All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Karkadash. And the Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Bahashem, in the name of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Those are their true names in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, the Lashwan Kadash, the Holy Tongue. And Shalom to the uh, elders for preaching the word truthfully and sincerely in the names of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Karkadash. And Shalom to the uh, uh, Akiyam, scattered the four corners of the globe, which the word should be sincerity as well, too, in the names of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, Bahashim, or Karkadash. Say Shalom to the Akiyam, and Shalom to the Akwa sisters as well, too, when I say Shalom. So, out here on the highways and hedges, on this uh, October the 30th, 2023, at 3.36 p.m., October the 30th, on this Monday afternoon, in the water, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shah, for giving us the opportunity and the chance to come out here, so... And this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter nine, and verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure not the time that is really in itself. What thou seest, the course of the sun is past. What I have told thee, right? So we're measuring the time that is really in itself. You know, and we're seeing what's going on in the world today. Of these biblical signs, it's only going to continue to increase. That the Heavenly Father spoke of. You know, that's why we are measuring the time that is really in itself, and we're focusing on our prophecies. What's going on in the world today? You know." major events, global events, and uh, prophecies that's about to be about to come to pass as well too. So we're gonna continue to see the increasing of these biblical signs that the Heavenly Father told us to keep a lot of them. And measure the time diligent in itself we have that spiritual discernment and have that uh and have that uh, discerning the times of the times that we live in. Now I'm gonna read again for edification sake. This is a uh, second Ezra chapter nine and verse one of the apocryphal books of the Holy Scriptures, and it reads: He answered me then and said, "Measure up the time diligently in itself. What thou seest, the parts of the signs past, which I have told thee before." This is second Ezra chapter nine and verse two of the apocryphal books of the Holy Scriptures, and it reads: It says, "Then thou shalt understand it is a very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made, right? And that's the heavenly Father is going to continue to visit this world and so on and ever which he made, because he's the true Creator. He's the Earthquakes, landslides, and floodings, the famines, the pestilence, the plagues that we've been seeing in the world today that's leading up to these increasing biblical signs. And we're going to continue to see the Heavenly Father visit this earth now so more than ever, you know. And this is uh, 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 3 of the Apocryphal Books of the Holy Scriptures, and it reads It says, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of people in the world, right, seditions, uprisings, uproars of people in the world that we're seeing in the world today, you know, and the earthquakes in diverse places, you know. And that's when we've been seeing the increasing of these uh, uh, high magnitudes of these uh, earthquakes in diverse places, right along with the uh, uprisings and uproars of people in the world. You know? So that's only going to continue to increase because these are biblical signs that we are prophesying about, you know, and we're measuring the time diligently of these biblical signs that the Heavenly Father spoke of that was going to occur in these times, just like it occurred in ancient times. We're going to see that transpire increasingly now, so more than ever in these modern day times. Just like the prophets of old did, they prophesied against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. That's what we're doing, prophesying against war, uh, prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. And it's only going to continue to increase, you know. Because like the scripture says, there's no new thing under the sun. And that's Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 and verse 9, you know. But continue on, this is uh, second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 3. It says, Then thou shalt understand that the Most High spake of these things from the days of before thee, even from the beginning, right from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. And these are the signs that we were seeing that the Heavenly Father spoke of from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So these biblical signs is only going to continue to increase. It's going to manifest now some more than ever. And this is what we're out here prophesying about war, evil, and pestilence. So the wars are going to continue to increase, the evils are going to continue to increase, and the pestilence and the plagues is going to continue to increase and intensify now some more than ever because these are the increase of the signs of the times that we're in. As we move forward and progressing on, we're going to see more and more and more of these increasing signs of these biblical signs. You know? This is uh, Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5. For like all that is made in the world, it had a beginning and an end is manifested. Right, the beginning of an end and the end is being manifested. The end of this wicked rulership of this modern day Babylon uh, economical and this modern day Babylon system, we're seeing the uh, the end of it, you know, and we're seeing closer the more signs of it, the more we prophesy against it, we, uh, speak, teach, and prophesy about, and have the Father expose this modern day uh, Babylon system. Because, like the scripture says, Job 9 24, the earth was given to the hands of wicked, covering the faces of the just that were the first Maccabees 3 and 48, prime example. Isaiah 
29 and verse 16, surely your things is turned upside down as an esteem as his pot is clean, you know. That's why we see in the end of his wicked rulership is coming to naught, you know. The more we prophesy against it, the more we see in the increasing downturn and the downfall of it, you know. I'm going to read again, 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5. For like all that is made in the world, have a beginning and an end is manifest. The beginning of the end of the end is manifest of this evil wicked rulership of uh, that's ruling this uh, world in wickedness and evilness and unrighteousness, you know. Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So this whole world is in this, this whole world and this modern day society is in a state of mourning. Surely your things is turned upside down because the wicked is very rude. But very soon the wicked is going to, uh, rulership is coming to naught because your high boss, Shemel Shai, is going to be uh, next to rule and bring back righteousness like how it's supposed to be because everything is going to be turned right side up, right and upside down because the wicked is very rude right now because evilness and wickedness is being high esteem in this uh, society rather than righteousness being the highest thing in the society. So that, that's that's kind of upside down. That's backwards and that's unbalanced. That's unstable. That's unrighteousness, you know. But when the righteous get it back in the door today, the how about you know, the shots going to still going to store everything back in order like I was supposed to, you know. Now if we get into that uh, Matthew 24th chapter. Matthew 24th chapter. And this is the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1. And Hamashiach went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came unto him for to shew him the buildings of the temple. Matthew 24 and verse 2, And Hamashiach say unto them, See ye not all these things, verily I say unto you, It says, Shall not be left here one stone upon another, and thou shalt not be thrown down. This is uh, Matthew 24 verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Right, just like I mentioned that second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5, the beginning of the end and end is being manifested of these increasing biblical signs. The end of the wicked rulership is coming to naught, you know. That's why we're seeing the increasing of these biblical signs. But it's going to come with great pride because you know you have it a short time, you know. That's in Revelation 12 and 12, you know. <clears throat> and Yahweh Shah would apply to the disciples saying, Matthew 24 and verse 4. And Hamashiach answered and said, Take heed. It says, uh, And Hamashiach answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right? Just like we got to uh, take heed to that in modern day times. Just like the Shai spoke to the disciples, which our great forefathers back then. When Yahweh Shai was our Lord and our Savior, and our great forefathers, the disciples that they was back on the scene, you know, they asked Yahweh Shai, When shall be these things coming? And what shall be the sign of thy coming in the other end of the world? And Yahweh Shai and him. Hamashiach and Havashiah replied to the disciples saying, hey, take heed that no man deceive you. You know, that's what we got to take heed to in these modern day times as we continue to progress his own and move it forward of these increasing biblical signs and these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled as well too. Make sure we're not going to uh, get tossed to a fro of them different winds of doctrine before we came into the truth. And still we got to keep an eye on that as well too in these latter days, you know. As like uh, Hamashiach said, hey, take heed that no man deceive you. And we'll take a heed to that in these modern day times as well, too, you know. Uh, this is uh, Matthew's, continue on, go to the next verse. And this is uh, Matthew's 24 and verse 5. For many shall come in my name, say, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. Right, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of, uh, that's coming in the name of Hamashiach, and shall deceive many. You know, just like John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, so this truth, it makes us free. Us uh, so coming back into the sound doctrine of Yahweh Hashem Hashem, because <clears throat> wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times. Revelation one and three, blessed he that read, and through precepts I get understanding. Uh, continue to making our calling election sure, study to show thyself approved. So we got to come out of the ways of of, of uh, doctrination, of uh, following different denominations, which the Israelites that still live to this day, the ones that they don't still that they don't know that the fact that they are Israel. That's why we're out here on the highways and hedges, bidding them back into the marriage and telling them to come out of the ways of that and coming back into the ways of being an Israelite, of the respectable twin tribes of Israel from the northern kingdom into the southern kingdom, you know. So we got to uh, make sure to not get, continually get tossed to and fro in different winds of doctrine. So like scripture says, there's going to be uh, many, uh, there's going to be many people saying they are in the name of Hamashiach Yavashah, that they've been sent from Hamashiach Yavashah, like uh, Matthew 24 verse 24 verse 4 says, hey, take heed that no man deceive you, you know. And I'm going to read it again for edification's sake. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, and shall deceive men. 
This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 6, and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right? So wars and rumors of wars is only going to continue to increase. Hey, we're seeing what's going on over there in the Middle East, you know, with the uh, Palestinian uh, Israeli situation, Hamas versus the IDF. Recently, you had an airstrike from the IDF striking airstrikes over there from Lebanon and through Syria as well, too. And then recently, I believe it was another airstrike from the United States targeting uh, the Iraqis over there in Iraq, uh, Syria as well, too, you know. So the ongoing tensions are increasing over there in the Middle East. And what the scripture says in Matthew 24 and verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, you know. So these wars and rumors of wars, uh, it's only going to continue to increase, you know. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. <clears throat> and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Right, earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, the famines and pestilence and plagues in the earthquakes in diverse places. And the nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And that's what we're seeing. One nation rising up against another nation. One nation of armies rising up against another nation of armies. One nation of kingdoms rising up against another nation of kingdoms. One uh, kingdom. another kingdom of arms just like it says in uh, mark 3 and 24 if a kingdom be divided against itself that kingdom cannot stand uh mark 3 and 25 the next verse uh roughly paraphrase that scripture of uh, mark chapter 3 and verse 25 if a house be divided against itself the house cannot stand so all this is going to continue to increase because these are biblical signs of the signs of the times that we are in and this is what we're out here prophesying about our main focus is this prophecy uh, uh prophesying you know and I'm going to read it again. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 7. And it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Matthew 24, and verse 8. And it reads through the Holy Scriptures. And all these are the beginning of sorrows, right? So these are the increasing beginning stages of all sorrows that we are seeing of these biblical signs. It's only going to continue to manifest. It's only going to continue to increase. We're going to see it more and more and more now, so more than ever. So these are the increasing beginning stages of all sorrows that we're going to see more and more in the latter days. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 9. Then shall you... It says, Then shall they deliver you up, and shall be afflicted, and they shall not kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And this is, uh, and this is, uh, Matthew 34, and verse 10, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. And many shall be offended, and they shall betray one another, and they shall hate one another. And this is, uh, Matthew 24, and verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And this is, uh, Matthew 24, and verse 12. And because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Right, because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And that's going to increase more and more and more in the latter days, you know. Just like the scripture says, uh, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Like the scripture says, uh, east, uh, evil seducer wax spirits and wax worse in the latter days. Hey, that's uh, because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many are going to wax cold. And that's what we see in the latter days, you know. And this is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 13. It says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right, as be as us Israelites that's coming out here on the highways and hedges, uh, preaching, teaching, and prophesying of these signs uh, that we're seeing right now as we speak, as we continue to move forward of these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled in the increasing of these biblical signs. As we continue to make our calling election short, have the wisdom and knowledge and understanding, John 8 and 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Coming back into the ways of Yahweh, Hashem, Hashem. Turn from our evil and wicked ways. Then Israel back into their marriage. And if they take heed to it, you know, that's a beautiful thing. If not, you know, we keep on moving forward, you know. As long as we continue in that path that we are doing, as long as we continue to min uh, as long as we continue to uh, be in the ministries of the Mashiach, Abishai, and continue to uh, labor in the and labor and work in this truth of Yahweh Hashem as long as we continue in those paths to the best of our ability, you know. I the one rock is uh, that Lord willing that we be the ones that be saved in these latter days as us coming out here on the highways and hedges, you know. And Lord willing that we endure to the end, you know, as continue to uh, be good soldiers for Hamashiach Yahweh you know. Matthew 24, verse 13, I'm going to read it again. It says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Right, as long as he continues to endure to the end, the same shall be saved. You know? 
So I don't want to rock this out. We need those men that's out here on the highways and edges. Or the heaviness where we get scattered at pushing out the word out here on the highways and edges. I don't want to rock this out. We continue in the right path. In the right path, ways of the how about you to the best of our ability, meekness, humbleness, and sincerity. As long as we continue doing these ways, now so more than ever, you know. Hey, as long as we continue on that path for your how about you to the out of my right side that we be those men that we save in a lot of days for uh for us being the men of the Lord, you know, to the best of our ability. And Lord willing that we be saved, that we we be those men that be saved out of one right side for for us and our households as well too, out of one right side, you know. Lord willing, you know. Uh, Matthew 24 verse 14 it says in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations and the end shall come right that's why this word is being brought out in the four weeks of the road you know? and the Israelites that's out here on the highways and hedges we're bringing out the gospel of the Ha'ab Hashem El Shai you know? so Lord wouldn't that we continue to endure to the end and to the end and be saved that we be part of that number that 144 that we're seeking for that we're uh, being hopeful and left. That's why we're out here fishing for the elect men, you know. Yasha Ali is the person of power, you know. Matthew 24, verse 14, I'm going to read it again for edification's sake. It says, And the gospel of this kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Right, 2nd Edge chapter 9, verse 5. Hey, the beginning of the end, and the end's being manifest. The end of this wicked rulership, you know, which is ruled by the wicked. Because Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. That's why this gospel is being brought out through the four winds of the globe, wherever we've been uh, scattered at. It's like it says in uh, Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10, hey, we was going to be as the sand in the sea, and we are scattered among all the nations, as us being the Israelites, you know. That's why this word is being brought out. You know, the increasing of the true awakening of the Israelites, the actual descendants of the Israelites, the actual descendants of the Heavenly Father, you know, the actual sons and daughters of the Most High, you know. Hey, that's why this word is being brought out through the four winds of the globe, you know. The Israelite men is bringing out this word, you know. Now I'm going to bring out that uh, Matthew 24 and verse 37. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 37. And it says, uh, but as the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is uh, Matthew 24, and verse 38. It says, uh, for life, for as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marriage and giving into marriage until the day that Noah ends the ark. Matthew 24, and verse 39. It says, and, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This is uh, Matthew 24, and verse 40. Then shall be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. Matthew 24 and verse 41 and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says two men shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Uh, Matthew 24 and verse 42 and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says watch therefore for you know not what hour of the Lord I come. This is uh, Matthew 24 and verse 43 and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says but know that this if the good man of the house has known what watch the thief would have would come in, I mean would come and he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Matthew 24 and verse 44 and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says therefore be ye also ready for such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming. Right, first Thessalonians 5 and 2, prime example. And many many more scriptures uh, as prime examples as well too. But uh, my main focus in the, is uh, on the first Thessalonians five and two. Hey, Hamashiach to have a shot should come as a thief in the night. That's why we got to continue to be on our watch. That's why the Heavenly Father has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel. You know, as us being the actual Israelites. You know, continue to be on our watch, doing sit down lessons, and what's going on in the world today that leads up to biblical prophecies that backs up with the scriptures. You know. We do a sit down lesson on it, continue to prophesy about it, you know, and continue to be on our watch out here on the highways and hedges, uh, preaching the words of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, and continue to prophesy in the name of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai as well, too. That's why, uh, like I mentioned again, Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17, uh, Heavenly Father has made us a watchman unto the house of Israel, Joel 2 and 1, sound the alarm, blowing the trumpet, you know. Even though the Heavenly Father said we was going to be a prophet unto all nations, but we are out here to tell the Israelites what's taking place right now and what's about to come in the near future. You know? That's why, uh, so these are prime examples that I mentioned that we're uh, on our watch now so more than ever. May Yahweh Hashem Yahshua continually put that spirit on us to uh, continue to be on our watch now so more than ever. You know? 
example, this is uh, Matthew 24, verse 44. I'm going to bring it out again for application's sake. This is uh, Matthew 24, verse 44. It says, Therefore be ye also ready for such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Yeah, I'm now I'm going to bring out that Luke 17 and verse 28 as well, too. So that shows you that uh, this is another indicator and sign right here that we are living in the modern days of Noah, the modern days of Lot, modern day Tower of Babylon, modern day Egypt, and this modern day uh, Babylon uh, system. <laughs> This is uh, Luke 17 and verse 28. It says, likewise, also as was in the days of Lot, they eat, they drink, they bought, they sold, they plant, they build. This is uh, Luke 17 and verse 29, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, but the same day that Lot went out of S-O-D-O-M, if you know what I mean, it says it fire, it said it rained fire and brimstone and from heaven and destroyed them all. This is uh, Luke 17 and verse 30. It says, David, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And this is uh, uh, Luke 17 and verse 31, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, in that, it says, in that day, he, sh he says, Luke 17 and 31, in that day, he which shall be up upon the housetop, and his stuff is in the house, let him not come down to take it away, and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. This is the book of Luke, chapter 17, and verse 33. It says, remember Lot's wife. Right, so that's a, uh, a prime example right there. Just like uh, Lot's wife, she looked back and she got turned into a pit of salt. You know, we cannot look back, we gotta move forward. That's why we're out here speaking of prophecies, you know, and what's going on right now in the world today, right now as we speak. So the men of the Lord out here on the highways and hedges, and we're out here uh, speaking and teaching and prophesying and speaking of these uh, prophecies that's taking place in the world today, of these uh, biblical signs that we are seeing, you know, that's why we are measuring the time diligently in itself as we continue to move forward, as we continue to progress on in these modern day times and moving forward, moving forward of speaking of prophecies, that's what's going on as of right now. You know? So that's the man of the Lord's main focus is focusing on prophecies, focusing on measuring the time diligently in itself, you know. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 17, and verse 37, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, remember Lot's wife, right? So we got to remember Lot's wife as a prime example. And many more uh, prime examples of the Scriptures have indicated that, you know, hey, we cannot look back. We got to move forward, you know. And that's what we're out here doing on the highways and edges as we move forward. As time progresses on, as we move forward, of these prophecies that's got to be fulfilled and increasing of these biblical signs. And of, of us increasing measuring the time diligently in itself to continue to be on our watch. So we cannot look back just like Lot's wife did, you know, and she got turned into a pillar of salt. So we gotta move forward, you know. Just like it says in Isaiah chapter 31 and uh, Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 1, woe to them that go down to seek help from Egypt. Just like the Israelites want to continue to seek help down there to uh, ancient Egypt, and that's what's taking place in modern times. You know? That's why we're out here building Israel to the mirrors, telling them do not look back, do not have your 100% full love and trust in this uh, modern day system, of this modern day Babylon system, you know, of modern day Egypt, you know. So we gotta come out of those ways mentally and spiritually, even though the scripture says you can use the world but not abuse it, you know. First John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, that means the love of the Father is not in him. So we love in the way we love in the ways of this world 100 percent and then loving the heavenly father the highway and his own back son you know that's kind of unbalanced that's kind of unstable it's best to love the ways of your and move forward you know now i'm gonna get into that uh the ezekiel the 38th chapter as we see the uh russian ukraine situation heating up over there in that area this is uh, Ezekiel, the 38th chapter of Gog and the land of Magog, and this is a uh, future prophecy, you know. And they're going to target Israel in a lot of days, Gog and the land of Magog, you know. And Russia is going to be a garden to these nations as well, too. That's why you're seeing the building up what's going on over there in the Russian Ukraine situation, and we're seeing what's taking place over there in the uh, Middle East, you know, as well, too. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter uh, 38, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 2 son of men which is us we are the actual uh, sons of men we are the actual the sons of the most high that's why we're prophesying against God and the land of Magog just like the prophets of old did you know and Yahweh Bashem al then at the same time Yahweh Bashem al is putting the spirit on these uh, Russians 
to be in that warlike mindset. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 2. It says, Son of man, set thy face against God and land of Nabal. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal prophesied against him. Right, prophesied against uh, God and land of Magog and Meshach and Tubal, just like in ancient times. Now you see it transpire into modern day times because there's no uh, new thing under the sun. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 1. I'm going to read it again. It says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 2. The son of man set thy face against Gog and the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tubal, prophesied against him. Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 3. And thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tubal. In Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 4, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thy army, horses and horsemen. All of them pull for all sorts of armor, even a great company of bucklers and shields, and all of them heavenly swords. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, and verse 5, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. It says, Persia, which is the modern day Iranians, which is Elam, Ethiopia, the Cushites, and Libya, which is the Ishmaelites, with all of them which it was shielded him. Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 6, Gomer, which is the modern day Turks, and all his bands, the house of Togomor, of the North Quarters, and all his bands, and many people with me. This is uh, Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 7. And be thou prepared and prepare for thyself and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee. Be thou a guard unto them. Right, so that shows you that Russia, which is God and the land of Magog, they're going to be a guard to these nations. That's why we see the increasing uh, tensions between uh, the IDF versus uh, Syria. And then you got Russia, his allies with Syria as well too. And Turkey, which is uh, Gomer. This is Gomer Knights, Turkey. You know, that's why you're seeing uh, increasing escalation over there in that area. So Turkey is going to, I mean, so Russia is definitely going to be a guard to those nations over there. As we continue to see the increasing escalations over there in that area. So Russia is going to be a guard to these nations that I just mentioned. You know, Turkey, Ethiopia, Libya as well too, you know. <laughs> so this is a uh, future prophecy of uh, Ezekiel the 38 chapter. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 9. And it says, uh, Proclaim ye this amongst the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty man, and let all the men of war draw near, and let them come up. Right, so the Heavenly Father is uh, continuously, increasingly putting the spirit on these nations to be in that warlike mindset, to pair, uh, getting prepared for these nations to be in that warlike mindset, and preparing them for war, you know. And let them come up as they get in closer and closer uh, over there in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which is uh, Yahweh's decision, you know, because he's going to sit and judge all the nations round about, you know. So he's gathering, he's uh, significantly, increasingly gathering up all these nations over there in the Middle East, you know. I'm going to read again the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye just amongst the Gentiles, Gentiles are the uh, armies of the other nations. Proclaim ye just amongst the Gentiles, prepare war. Wake up the mighty man, let all the men of war draw near, and let them come up. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 3, and verse 10. I mean, uh, Joel, chapter 3, and verse 10, and it reads through the whole scripture. So lock here. Joel, chapter 3, and verse 10, it says, Beat your plowshares into swords and the plenty hooks into spears, and let the weak say I'm strong. That's why we're seeing these uh, nations of armies that you wouldn't expect to have upgradable nuclear capability. And that's what we're seeing right now in these modern day times. You know? Hey, the nations of these nations you wouldn't expect to be a uh, good solid nuclear power of their army you know iran north korea and many more other nations as well too building up their nuclear capability upgrading their nuclear capability hey now we're starting to see let the weak say i'm strong you, uh beat your plowshares into sports and the pony puts into the spears and let the weak say i'm strong we're going to continue to see more increases of that because you have Hashem Hashem is going to put that spirit on them to uh, upgrade their nuclear capability over there in the uh, more areas of these uh, militaries or these armies of nations. They are building up their nuclear capability against their adversaries. That's why we've been seeing nuclear escalations up at an all-time high. And we've been seeing uh, military spending up at an all-time high. Nuclear, es uh, nuclear es uh, military exercise drills and trainings ground troop trains up at an all-time high. You know, nuclear escalations and tensions between the nations is up at an all-time high. Uh, military spending of these nations funding their money in their military been increasing. 
you know, it's been ramping up, you know, ever since World War II. So all this is going to continue to increase, you know. But uh, continue on. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 11. It says, uh, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about and cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 12. It says, Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat and the valley of decision to sit and judge all the heathen round about. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 13. It says, uh, Put ye put ye in the sickness for the harvest is ripped, come to get ye down. The press is full, and the fat of overflow for their wickedness is great. This is uh, Joel chapter 3 and verse 14. It says, Multitudes and multitudes in the valley of, of valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Right? The day of the Lord is near in the valley of in the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is Jehovah's decision. And the Heavenly Father is going to sit and judge all the nations round about. That's why he's gathering all those nations slowly but surely, you know. See an increasing of, uh, uh, of that, you know, of a multi war uh, conflict over there with the IDF. You got all these adversaries. You got the United States and Israel. You know, they've been getting hit. You know, they've been getting targeted and hit throughout Iraq and Syria, throughout the Gaza Strip, throughout the West Bank, and throughout the Palestinian territory. Because these nations, these nations are armies that they uh, look at the United States and Israel as an adversary. So that's only going to continue to increase, you know. That's why we're seeing so much uh, escalations being, being uh, built up over there in the Middle East, you know. Because like it says, the book of uh, Matthew 24, verse 6, that I'll mention as well too. So these uh, wars and moments of wars is only going to uh, only going to continue to intensify and heat up now some more than ever, you know. Now for the bring out that uh, Luke 21, Luke 21 and verse 9. And this is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 9. It says, uh, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified for these things. Verse first come to pass, but the end is not yet. End by end by. Right, so we're going to see a lot of these increasing of these uh, wars, of wars and commotions. And that's what we see what's taking place over there in the South China Sea, in the Taiwan Strait, of uh, North Korea versus South Korea. I believe, yes, yeah, North Korea versus South Korea, Japan, and States, and then we've been having uh, renewed escalations between China and the Philippines over there in that area of those, of those territorial islands over there. We've been having China and the other Asian nations been trying to have claim over those islands over there in that area. That's why we're seeing uh, increasing dispute island uh, territory uh, disputes and escalations are building up over there in that uh, area. And keep this in mind, not too long ago, I'll say like, I'll say about five days, five or six days ago, almost close to a week now, and the United States said they, they're going to be ready to defend uh, the Philippines. Because keep this in mind, not too long ago, I'll say like a couple of months back in the year 2023, as current, you know, you had uh, uh, Japan, uh, Philippines, and the United States. They build up that security uh, cooperation, of uh, military army uh, security cooperation that they have uh, built up, you know, and they made an agreement upon all uh, that, amending that tensions that they have against China over there in the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait and those territorial islands over there in that area. And that's a prime example of uh, wars and commotions are uh, increasing over there in that area, right along with the uh, North Korea versus South Korea, Japan, and the United States. And I believe uh, near Guam, because Guam, that's a United States territory island over there, you had uh, South Korea and the United States recently just did a military exercise drill over there. And then uh, I would say over there in the Korean Peninsula, uh, well, of that as well too, you had uh, South Korea, Japan, and the United States, they did a, a military exercise drill over there as well too. So so that's most likely, uh, most likely that's gonna stir up North Korea, you know, cause North Kim Jong-un, he been saying this uh, previously and as a recently as well too. And he looked at that as a potential ground invasion to uh, attack North Korea. And these are prime examples of uh, wars and moments of wars. And we've been seeing North Korea been firing off their missiles at an all time high from last year and this year as well too. And North Korea been building up their nuclear capability, you know. So this, this is only gonna continue to increase. You know? That's why the wars and commotions are only gonna continue to heat up. These wars and rumors of wars is only going to continue to heat up and increase, you know.
because these are the increasing of the signs of the times. You know, that's what we are out here prophesying about. Uh, prophesying against the old countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. You know, just like the prophets of old did, Jeremiah 28 8, prophesied against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. And that's how our uh, great forefather Jeremiah said this in Jeremiah 28 8. You know, the prophets that have been before thee and before thee of old prophesied against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. Just like the prophets in these modern day times, we're back on the scene today out here on the highways and edges, prophesying against great countries and great kings of war, evil, and a pestilence. And it's only going to continue to increase, you know. And I'm going to read it again. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 9. It says, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by end by. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, and verse 10. It says, Then say he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Right, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And this is a cross reference to uh, uh, Matthew 24, verse 6 and through verse 7 of the uh, nation that rise against nations and kingdom against kingdom. So we're going to continue to see this increasing in these modern day times because these are the signs of the times that we're in. <clears throat> and this is what we're out here prophesying about of the signs of the times of these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled and the increase of these biblical signs that we're seeing right now as we speak. So it's only going to continue to increase now. This is the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines, I mean, yeah, and famines and pestilence and plagues. I mean, and, and, uh, so I can read that again, my apology. This is the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall that be from heaven. Right, so it's going to be a modern day famine of the world. A Amos 8 and 11 as a prime example. Just like it took place in ancient times, we're going to see that transpire in modern day times because there's uh, no new thing in the sun, even though we're seeing different things happen in these modern day times in, in comparison to uh, what's going on, what happened in ancient times. What we see in these new things that's taking place in, uh, in these modern day times, you know. And I'm going to read it again. It's the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 11. And a great earthquake shall be in diverse places. Right, earthquakes in diverse places. The high magnitudes of these earthquakes in diverse places that we've been seeing, you know. So we've been recently seeing an earthquake that took place over there in New Zealand. That was a magnitude of a 6.3. And that Vantu Island, that was a magnitude of a 6.3. And we've been seeing the increasing of these earthquakes in diverse places, you know. Not too long ago, over there in Papua New Guinea, that was a magnitude what over a 7.0. You know, recent earthquakes that have been taking place in these different countries as well too. Hey, so that shows you an indicator right there of these uh, earthquakes in diverse places and these tropical storms. Uh, Hurricane Otis that hit over there in Mexico. I believe uh, the last time I checked, the death toll was like 23. Now the death toll is rising up. You know. Now they're uh, trying to straighten up the aftermath of the destruction that took place. Uh, what happened to that uh, tropical storm over there near Mexico, over there in that area, you know. So, just like it says in Isaiah 29 and 6, Thou shalt be busy of the Lord of hosts with, uh, with, with earthquakes, thunder, and storms, and flames of the violent fire, you know. The recent wildfires that we've been seeing, the recent earthquake, tornadoes, storms, landslides, floods, the famines, the pestilence, the plagues, just like it says in 2nd Ezra chapter 15 verse 5, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. So all these biblical signs that we're seeing right now, as currently, and we're going to continue to see that increase in here. I'm going to read it again for application's sake. This is the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Hey, in the latter days, hey, we're going to see tornadoes and earthquakes and landslides and floodings in areas that you wouldn't expect to happen in a very long time. You know, it's like that earlier in the year, I would say like a couple of months ago, it was an earthquake over there in France. Recent earthquakes that took place over there in Melbourne, in Australia. An earthquake that recently took place of East London of South Africa a couple of months ago that haven't had an earthquake in a very long time. So these are prime examples of us going to see earthquakes in diverse places of increasing of high magnitudes of these earthquakes in diverse places in areas that you wouldn't expect that got hit in the, that, got, that haven't got hit by an earthquake in a very long time. And we've definitely been seeing increasing signs of that, especially throughout the whole year of 2023. And hey, we've been seeing a uh, large amount of uh, world breaking of these uh, earthquakes like we've never seen before. 
you know, earthquakes was coming out of nowhere, out of nowhere, hey, every second, every day, every hour, you name it, you know. And this has been a world record of uh, so many earthquakes in one year, you know. And we're going to continue to see more increasing signs of that, you know. And these are the signs that the Heavenly Father spoke of, you know. And we're going to continue to see that increase, you know. Just like it says in 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1, you know, measure the time diligently in a second. And all these signs are going to come to pass, and it's going to be uh, fulfilled as well, too. That's why the Heavenly Father said, uh, measure the time diligently in itself. So if we're measuring the time diligently in itself of these increases in biblical signs, and the tornadoes, the earthquakes, the landslides, the floodings, the famine, the pestilence, the plagues, it's only going to continue to increase, you know. And this is what we're out here prophesying. Prophesying against great countries and great kings, a war, evil, and a pestilence, just like our great forefathers. So we are in the spirit of our great forefathers prophesying against great countries and great kingdoms of war, evil, and pestilence. So the wars are just going to continue to increase. The evils are going to continue to increase. And the pestilence are going to continue to increase as well, too. Because you got two different types of pestilence and plagues. The weather conditions that we've been seeing, you know, life-threatening weather conditions that we've been seeing as well, too. And they claim uh, a lot of lives as well, too. Especially, uh, like we say, like two months ago, what took place over there in Libya. But that flooding that claimed the lives of thousands of people, and what took place over there in Morocco, claimed thousands of lives of people. And earlier in this year, what happened over there in uh, Central Turkey and over there in Iraq as well. I mean, over there in Central Turkey, that claimed the lives of 50,000 people. And what took place not too far from Turkey, or the borders over there from Central Turkey all the way to Syria, claimed the lives of another additional thousand people, you know. So, hey, these are, uh, Pestilence, these uh, these pestilence and plagues of these weather events, and the uh, pestilence and plagues and diseases are going to continue to increase as well too. You know, so it's like it says, hey, earthquakes in diverse places, the famines, the pestilence and plagues, and it's only going to continue to increase because these are uh, biblical signs of the signs of the times that we're living in. You know, and these are the signs that the Heavenly Father said of these uh, signs that was going to occur in these times. He spoke about these things from the days that were before the even from the beginning. And we're taking heed to that. Now we're seeing the Heavenly Father spoke of these signs. And hey, now we're starting to see it plays out, you know, as we progress this on and move forward of these prophecies that's about to be fulfilled and more increasing of these biblical signs, major events and global events as well, too. So it's only going to continue to increase. And it's only going to continue to be revealed. And it's going to continue to manifest now so more than ever, you know. And I'm bringing out Luke 21 and verse 11 to green. I mean, Luke 21, verse 11 again, for edification sake. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 11. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And famines, right, so we're going to see famines. Just like famines we see seeing taking place right now around the world. The famines, the pestilence, the plagues that's taking place around the world is only going to continue to increase. A Amos 8 and 11, modern day famine, in other words for a lack of bread, for a lack of water, for a lack of resources. But the hearing of the words of Yahweh Hashem HaShah, that's going to increase, you know, now so more than ever. <laughs> Since I mentioned that, we're bringing that out as well, too. So, yeah, that modern that modern day famine of the word is coming. We're seeing it slowly but surely, and it's only going to continue to increase. Just like it says in uh, Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 33, then they, shall know, then they shall know that a prophet was among you. Because the Israelites didn't take heed to the words of the Ha'abash and Yahshua, just like in ancient times. Because like scripture says, there's no new thing under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. Just like we're out here in modern day times, sounding the alarm, blowing the trumpet to the Israelites. You know, even though we are prophet unto uh, all the nations as well too. But mostly, but mostly primarily of the Israelites. Of the, the famines, the pestilence, the plagues that we are prophesying about. And Israel is not taking heed to it. Especially the Israelites that's of this world that they don't know that they are Israel. So these uh, famines and pestilence, the plagues, you know, the seditions and uprisings and the uproars of people in the world, hey, it's going to catch Israel off guard, you know, the Israelites off guard, you know. It's like it says in Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 33, then they shall know that a prophet was among you. Just like the Israelites in ancient times, they didn't take heed to the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, as the Heavenly Father sent out his men, his uh, servants and prophets, you know. In the ancient times, Israel did take heed to it. Of the warnings of the famines and pestilence and plagues, you know, and then they caught them off guard and they got hit with those famines and pestilence and plagues, even though it hit the other nations as well, too, but most of the primary Israel as well, too. So, this is a uh, so, a hey, that modern day famine is uh, coming, you know, in these modern day times. The 
the modern day famine of the word, you know. It's like in ancient times, you want to see it transpire once uh, back once again in ancient times. I mean, in modern day times, because there's no new thing under the sun. This is uh, Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will bring a famine in a land, not a famine or bread, nor thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord. Right. Not a famine or bread, neither thirst for water, but the hearing of the words of the Lord. Right. But the hearing of the words of the Lord. Just like it says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6, Hey, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Hey, now is the time to seek the heavenly Father, now is the Lord of heaven, you know? Romans 13 and 11, for now it's high time to work out of sleep. Us as a you know, we got to come back into the ways of God, by Shabbat Shabbat, and turn from our evil and wicked ways, and come out of the ways of this modern day Babylon system, even though we're other world, we're not other So we got to draw near and come back near to the heavenly Father. Through this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. <laughs> now, if you bring out that uh, 1 John 2 and 15, since I mentioned it, and this is the book of 1 John 2 and verse 15. It says, uh, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? So, if any Israelite man loves the ways of this world, that means the love of the Father is not in him. Even though we understand everything is a balance, but we got to come back into the ways of us being the Israelites. You know, come out of the ways of this world mentally and spiritually. Just like it says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the deceiver, is a warring lion walking about seeking who he may devour. Hey, Revelation 12 and 12, the ultimate deceiver should come down with great wrath, because he know he had but a short time. Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, cover the faces of the judge, uh, uh, what's that scripture? Uh, Salakia. Uh, oh yeah, Isaiah 29 and verse 16. Surely your things is turned upside down as an esteem as a pot is clay. You know, hey, so it's important for us to come back to the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Holy Scriptures and through from our Heavenly Father's will too, as us being the Israelites, you know. So wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of our times and the building of the strength, uh, the building and the strength of our salvation in the fear of the Lord's treasure. And that's coming back into the ways of Yahweh Bashi on Shaq, you know. So we cannot uh, love the ways of this world, but love the ways of the heavenly Father, you know, because of following the ways of the heavenly Father is righteousness, you know, everlasting life, all in our lives, living home, you know. Just like it says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15, hey, we got to walk as wise, not as fools, and we're demon at times because the days are evil, you know. But we're about to enter into some unprecedented times like ever before. So this wisdom and knowledge and understanding should be the stability of our times. You look up the word stability, that goes into having a sound mind and stable mind. And these are, uh, and this is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Holy Scriptures and from the Heavenly Father of Yahweh. You know, it is the most important to have, especially the times that we're about to enter into, and the times that we are in right now, and the times that we are about to approach. You know, and we'll bring out that uh, Romans 12 and 2 as well, too. chapter 12 and verse 2 it says be not conformed to this world but ye transform it by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable in the will of Yahweh right so we got to come back into the ways of Yahweh not conforming to the ways of this world but being renewed in our mind and that's coming back into the ways of heaven father and turn from our evil and wicked ways of what this world uh, of what this world promotes for us to conform to so we got to turn from those ways mentally and spiritually coming back into the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahshah mentally and spiritually through this wisdom and knowledge and understanding you know John 8 32 and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and that's coming back into the ways of the Heavenly Father coming back into the ways of learning the Holy Scriptures you know? through precepts I get understanding you know Revelations 1 and 3 blessed he that readeth you know hear the things which are written because the times are at hand you know 
America. We're about to enter into some uh, increasing unprecedented times like never before. A uh, second Timothy story of one. Uh, Matthew's 24 verse 21. Matthew's 24 verse 12, you know. Second Ezra chapter 8 verse 50. Second Ezra the 15th chapter. These are the times that we are about to enter into. We, we're seeing uh, signs of it right now, but we're going to entering into it at a, as a uh, unprecedented time like never before. So, hey, now it's that uh, uh, us Israelites, especially the Israelites that's of this world that, that do want to take heed to the words of God, Bashan al Shah. If the ones know, if the ones don't, you know, that's on them, you know. Hey, the blood is off our heads. And that's a prime example of uh, Ezekiel uh, chapter 3, verse 17, through verse 4, uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17 through verse 20. And that says as a prime example of that scripture. <laughs> So it's important for the Israelites to come back to the Heavenly Father and turn from our evil and wicked ways and come back to the ways of righteousness. You know, turn turn from the evilness and wickedness of what this world promotes for us to conform to. Come out of the ways of that and come back into the ways of Yahweh Hashem El Shai as us gave the Israelites. You know? This is uh, Romans 12 and 2. I'm going to bring it out again for edification's sake. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but ye transform it by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect in the will of Yahweh. Right, what's good and perfect and acceptable in the will of Yahweh. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. This is the whole duty of men, fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. Of course, we're not going to be saved by the Father, you know, but we can try to the best of it, keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, and come back into the ways of Yahweh, Hashem, and Hashem, and turn from our evil and wicked ways, you know. Now, if we bring out that uh, Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12, and verse 13, since I mentioned it. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. And then after that, I'm going to bring out the uh, Isaiah 55 and verse 6 and through verse 7. Right along with the uh, Isaiah 33 and verse 6 as well too. And the second Chronicles 7 and verse 14. And this is, uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Right, so this is the whole duty of the Israelite man. Fear Yahweh keep his commandments, turn back to the Heavenly Father, draw back near to him, with we'll meekness, humbleness, and sincerity, and, and continue to pray and seek his face now so more than ever, and turn from our evil and wicked ways, our transgressions, our iniquities, and our sins, and come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father, as being the Israelite, you know, as a uh, part of the 12 tribes of Israel from the northern king into the southern king, you know. <clears throat> now I'm going to bring out the Isaiah 55 and verse 6. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. It says, uh, seek ye the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Right, seek ye the Lord, uh, seek ye the Lord and call upon him while he is near. So, hey, it's important for us to seek the Lord now some more than ever while he may be found, you know. And that's coming back into the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yah Shai, turning from our evil and wicked ways and seeking the heavenly Father now some more than ever. This is uh, Ezekiel, I mean, Salaki. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 7. It says, let the wicked man forsake. It says, let the wicked man uh, forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. So our God, Yahweh, for he will abundant fruit. Right, once we come back into the ways of the Hashem El Shah, and then uh, acknowledge that we've been born, that we've been doing wrong in the sight of the Heavenly Father. You know, once we acknowledge those things, and come back into the ways of the Heavenly Father his righteousness. So I don't want to rock may you have I should not share uh, abundantly fruitless from the ways of evilness and wickedness as we coming back into the ways that we have I should not share through, through his righteousness. Now I'm about to bring out that second chronicles. No matter of fact I'm bring out that uh Isaiah 33 and verse 6. And this is the book of Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation and the fear of the Lord's destruction. Right, coming back to uh, fear of the Lord, coming back to the ways of his ways, because the, way, the ways of the Heavenly Father is his righteousness, his everlasting life, prolonging our lives and living longer, following the ways of righteousness and turning away from evilness and wickedness, and coming back to the ways of us being the Israelites, you know, the sons and daughters of the Most High. So coming back into the ways and conforming back into the ways of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai is the better option to choose and not continue to conform to the ways of this world. It's like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse uh, 19, the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the sight of the Heavenly Father. So the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Heavenly Father is the better option to choose, especially of us being the Israelites. Now I'm about to bring out the uh, 
now for the bring out that uh, second chronicle of 70 verse 14. Matter of fact, I'm gonna bring out that Romans, then I'm gonna bring out the uh, second chronicle of 70 verse 14. So that's why we're out here uh, bidding Israel to the marriage, you know, fishing for the elect men of Yahshua Ali is a prince of power. You know? This is uh, Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. It says, and that knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our, uh... You said, uh, Jews? Hmm? You said Jews? No, I said that presented by Joseph Rosenberg. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. This is, uh, Romans, uh, chapter 13, verse 11. No, it's been there a long time. Right? Yeah. This is the book of... Uh, I don't think so, it's been it was presented. Yeah, it's been here for a while. For a while? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. Huh? Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. This is uh. All right, y'all have to go. Take care. Take care, you too. This is uh the book of Romans, chapter thirteen, and verse eleven. It says, "And that knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation, therefore we believe." Right. So now is high time to wake out of sleep. You Israelites, you know, we got to come back into the ways of the Avashim Yashar, eternal, even in the ways, you know. And once again, I'm going to read it again. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13, and verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to break out of sleep. For now is our salvation, there do we believe. Right, so wisdom and knowledge and understanding should be the stability of our times. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Us this much, you know. That's why we're out here for the this much, you know. We're out here for our, uh, we're out here for our people, you know. If they want to uh, come back and inquire, they come back into the ways of the Alamash and Alshai, you know. So... That's why I brought out the Romans 13 11, even though I, uh, even though I brought it out twice, you know. But this is uh, very important for us as we like, you know. Okay, we got to draw back near and turn back to the heaven, Father, and turn from our evil and make a you know. So Romans 13 and verse 11, I'm going to read it again for a third time. It says, and that knowing the time, that now is high time to wake out of sleep. Right, so now is that time, the high time to wake out of sleep. Hey, the heavenly Father showing us more signs, more, 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 you know. Yeah, that shows you that we're entering in some more, uh, we're entering in some uh, important, serious times, you know. So, hey, now's that time, the high time to break out of sleep. Israel, the actual Israelites, the actual children of Israel, which is us. Because the Israelites, they can say, dark skin compared to the people, and still to this day, even though we've been scattered amongst all the nations. So, you're going to have the lighter brown Israelite to the darker brown Israelite, you know. Because that shows you that the Israelites, they was a uh, people of color, was you were modern days of dark skinned people lighter lighter brown people and dark skinned uh, people <laughs> so that shows you that uh we're not black hebrew israelites no we are hebrew israelites well, I don't know if you that shows you that we're different shades of brown and i'm going to the next scripture this is uh romans 13 and verse 12 it says the night is far spent the days are at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light, right? Let us cast off the, uh, the works of darkness and putting on the armor of light. That's the armor of light of Yahweh, which is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And this wisdom and knowledge and understanding, just like it says in Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6, wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of our times. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and that you shall make it free. And I'm read again. So as I mentioned again, you know, even if I uh, repeat that, even if I sound repetitive, but this is very important for us Israelites. Draw back near to the Heavenly Father. You know, like Scripture says, a just man fought seven times, but he get right back up. You know, this is the Book of Romans, chapter thirteen, verse twelve. It says, "The night is far spent, the days are at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light." Right? Let us put on the armor of light. That's the. Uh, the armor, the righteous armor of light, which is the Heavenly Father, you know, because the Heavenly Father, that's his true name, uh, Yahweh, you know, and his only begotten son, by Hashem, in the name of Mashiach, Kabashah, those are their true names in ancient Canaan, and he will be lost from the Holy Tongue, for us to come back to our heritage, our culture, and our customs, you know, I mean, our culture, and our customs, and our heritage, you know, because the scripture says, Jeremiah 17 and 4, even thyself should be discontinued from our heritage, and if we've been discontinued from our heritage, now the Heavenly Father giving us an opportunity chance to come back of who we actually are. Hey, he's, he's giving us back our, uh, our language, our culture, our customs, you know, of us coming back to being this much. So that's a that's a beautiful and humble, that's a beautiful and humble thing, you know, to come back to be the, uh, the true 
children of the most high, hey, giving us this wisdom and knowledge and understanding, waking up to the fact that we are his Lord, you know, waking us to the fact that we are his light, and the Heavenly Father put the Spirit on us to prophesy and our the high ways and measures. You know, before we came into this truth, I mean, before we came into this truth, we wouldn't expect it for us to be able to uh, do this, you know. So it's a humbling, honor, and beautiful thing for the Heavenly Father to uh, bring, give us our, our culture and our customs and our language and our heritage. Back. So that's a beautiful thing, you know. And definitely not taking that for granted. You know, we're walking out of our shop and waking us up in these last days, you know, and hopefully that we'll be able to uh, wake up uh, and listen like men, you know, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, let of that as well too, you know. I just want to add an additional note to that. I'm going to read it again. This is the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 13. It says the night is far spent and the days are at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Right, just like it says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, you know, this is a uh, precept, a similar precept to that Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Hey, put on the whole armor of light. I mean, put on the whole armor of your house so you can withstand against the wise of the deceiver. Because the wise of the deceiver shall come down with ultimately great wrath because you know you have it a short time. Right along with 1 Peter 5 and 8 as well, too, as a prime example. It says, uh, Romans 13 and verse 13, it says, Let us walk honestly as the days not in rioting and drunkenness. Right, like scripture says, uh, be wise as serpent times as doves. Uh, walk circumspectly, implying this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. This is uh, Romans 13, verse 13, and it reads to the Holy Scripture. It says, let us walk honestly as the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wanting, not in strife and envy. This is uh, Romans chapter 13, and verse 14. It says, but put ye on the, but ye put on the Lord Hamashiach and make not provision for the flesh to, to uh, fulfill the lust thereof. Yeah, um, now I'm going to bring out that uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. And this is the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14 in the reads of the Holy Scriptures. It says, uh, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will hear their name. So it's important for us Israelites to uh, turn back to heavenly Father, draw back near to him. Seeking the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Because the days of Hamashiach return is not in him. You know, we got to take heed to the words of the Abashiach. Hey, First Thessalonians 5 and 2. Hey, Hamashiach, Yahweh should come as a thief in the night. You know, Romans 13 and 11. For now it's high time to wake out of sleep. You know, put off the work of darkness and put on the uh, righteous armor of light of Yahweh. You know, and applying this wisdom, applying these uh, scriptures of this wisdom and knowledge and understanding. It's like I mentioned, uh, uh, Revelations 1 and 3, blessed he that readeth, because the time, what's the things which are at written, which is these holy scriptures, because the times are at hand. So, hey, now's the time, the high time, we got to sleep this way, this is us, this is you know, you know, uh, turn from our evil and wicked ways, and come back into the ways of the Ha'abash and Hashem. That's why we are out here on the highways and the hedges for the Israelite men, fishers for the elect men, the Lord willing that we be that uh, part of that hopeful elect, the Lord willing. Uh, Right this I know. I'm gonna read it again. This is a uh, second chronicle chapter 70, verse 14. It says, If my people which are called by my name, and this is the last scripture that I'm gonna close out for today. This is a uh, second chronicle chapter 70, verse 14. It says, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. Right, so that the Father is going to restore us once we turn back to Him, once we draw back near to Him, and coming back to the ways of Yahweh Hashem as us being the sons and daughters of the Most High, you know, the holy, set apart, righteous people like I was once was, even though the Heavenly Father is going to say one third of of His people. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring out that Isaiah 11 and 11, and verse 13, and definitely for sure I'm going to close out. So it's very important for the Israelites to turn back and draw back near to the Heavenly Father. Like the scripture says, a just man falls seven times, but he get right back up. So we got to seek the Heavenly Father now so more than ever. Now's that time to do so. Hey, turn back, turn from our evil and wicked ways, and turn back to the ways of the Ha'abash and Yahshua. That's us being the sons of the Most High. You know, the sons and daughters of the Most High. The chosen people of the Most High. We turn from our evil and wicked ways, you know. Because the days are about to get evil, you know. 
you're seeing it right now as we speak. You know, hey, Matthew's 24, verse 12, and because of the of the Lamb, the love of many should wax cold. Now it's important for us to draw back near to the Heavenly Father and turn from our evil and wicked ways, apply this wisdom and knowledge and understanding, seeking the ways of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. You know, coming back to the ways of you being Yahshua, he is the Prince of Power. Inquire, uh, the Heavenly Father, inquire in the Holy Scriptures. Inquire that you are an Israelite. Turn back from your evil and wicked ways and come back and draw back near to the Heavenly Father, you know, and through his righteousness, you know. Now I'm going to bring out that Isaiah 11, 11. And this is the book of Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11, and it reads to the Holy Scriptures. It says, and it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Paphros and from Kish and from Elam and from Shadnar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And these are the areas that we've been scattered in. So the Heavenly Father, only we got son, which is Hamashiach and Hashiach, is going to come back to save the remnant of his people. And Lord willing that, that we be part of that one third, that one point four of all the twelve tribes of Israel. You know? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter eleven, verse twelve. It says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and shall gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the globe. I mean four corners of the earth, so like uh, this is a uh, Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 13, it says, The envy of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. It says, Ephraim shall not uh, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Right, so we're not going to envy or vex one another no more. Okay, we're going to come back together as a nation from the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom of the top tribe from uh, Ephraim of the northern kingdom and the top tribe from Judah, which is uh, the southern kingdom. You know, hey, we're going to be. Ephraim and Judah is going to be back together as a nation, like how we once was. You know? That's why the Heavenly Father is gathering, gathering his people back, especially his right man. You know, we, he's gathering us up back in a lot of days. Just like it says in Zephaniah 9 and 1, gather yourselves together. Uh, yea, all ye nations I desire, which is us, the Israelites. Hey, the outcasts of Israel, the dispersed of Judah through the four corners of the world. Hey, the Heavenly Father is gathering his people. Because Hosea 1 and 10, Israel shall be as the same as the sea. So we're not 12, 12 to 13 percent of the population. That's not true. A dispersed with Judah is scattered through four corners of the globe, scattered through four corners of the earth, I mean to say. And the uh, outcasts of Israel have been scattered as well, too. From the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, we've been scattered. You know? And we're uh, gathering ourselves back together in these latter days. You know? As I brought out the Isaiah 11 and 11 through verse 13, the Heavenly Father is going to say one third remnant of his people. Zechariah 13 and verse 8 as a prime example right along with Isaiah 11 and 11 through verse 13 and many scriptures to back that, back that up as well too you know so with that uh, hopefully this uh, lesson is uh, had a fun out here on the highways and hedges on this uh, 4.43 p.m. on this uh, Monday afternoon October 30th 2023 so with that hopefully this uh, lesson was out of fun out here on the highways and hedges uh, the Heavenly Father's true name is uh, Yahweh and his only begotten son, Baha Shem, in the name of Mashiach Yahushai. Those are their true names in the ancient petty of Hebrew, the Lashem of the Holy Tongue. So, with that, I would like to give all praises and glory and honor to, to Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, uh, Shalom to the uh, elders for preaching the word, truthfully and sincerely. In the names of Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem, and I say Shalom to the elders out there as well, too. And Shalom to the uh, Akim, scattered through the four corners of the globe, preaching the word. In the names of Yahweh, Bashim Yahshai, Bahashim and And I say Shalom to the Hakim out there as well too. And Shalom to the Akwa sisters as well too. In the names of Yahweh, Bashim Yahshai, Bahashim and And I say Shalom to the Akwa sisters as well too. And until next time, I will say Shalom, Elders, Bahakim, Bahakim. Until next time, I will say Shalom.